fixed. You have this blasted Virginia landscape. For America's artists, the Civil War was a tough topic to paint, and many of them shied away from the grisly realities of warfare. This exhibition started with a question I couldn't answer. Why are there so few paintings of the Civil War, of actual combat, painted at the time that it's going on? It takes another generation to process who the heroes are, what the pivotal battles are, what's the narrative we're supposed to take away from all of this. But in the moment, at a time when you don't know how the war is going, how long it's going to last, or even who's going to win, what do you paint? According to curator Eleanor Jones Harvey, you paint anything but the war trying to paint the Civil War on a monumental scale is an absolute failure. Um, Peter Rothermel will paint Gettysburg and it will go on view in the Pennsylvania State House and everyone is shocked because it is hand-to-hand -hand combat, nearly life-size. And I don't think people realize they're not ready for that until they're right in front of it. There is no romanticism left in this war. There, there's nothing here to celebrate. And if you think about it, there's no market for pictures of Americans killing each other. This isn't the British where you get to you know, beat the British Empire and send them back across the Atlantic. There's nothing heroic about killing each other. With only a handful of paintings depicting actual battles, the exhibition may not be quite what you'd expect. But then again, the idea is to show that all aspects of American life were affected by the Civil War even the way that landscape painters viewed the world around them. You couldn't read five sentences in the 19th century without running across a metaphor for the world as you know it coming apart at the seams. The volcanic ash resembling the cannon smoke, he calls it rolling war done that blocks the light. And the red light that falls on uh, across the whole thing definitely recalled just the, the bloodshed on the battlefield. The Civil War was the first time many soldiers had seen black slaves, so often on their minds was the question of color. At what point on that scale of skin tone, very dark to very light, do you cease to be a person and become property? Hotly contested topic in America about the idea that one drop of black blood automatically made you a slave. She can pass for white, so she lives with her dad. She can't and so she's an enslaved member of the household. This is a picture about what we in the 21st century would call an issue of basic human rights. The southern leaning press loved it because they said, look, everybody here is happy, they're healthy, they're well-dressed, they're playing music, slavery can't possibly be that bad. The northern Republican pro-Lincoln press looked at the rotting rafters over their heads and said it's symbolic of the rot that is at the core of the institution of slavery, and if it takes a war to get rid of it, then we must fight a war to do it. Right. And so both sides used it as propaganda. Yeah. After four years of bloody war, the northern states won and slavery was abolished. But for the artists, it created more questions than it did answers. This resets democracy in America. This is the new threshold, not the revolution in the 1770s. So what kind of country did we get out of the Civil War? How do we absorb this conflicted part of our history and move forward. What do we want to be as a country? Nick Harper for Telesaur, Washington.